Hi, this is John Garrett from hypertransitory.com. This is part three of my uh, Illustrator uh, creating a logo in Adobe Illustrator tutorial. In this one, I want to talk about uh, using some of the text effects and uh, layers and, and um, outlining your text. Now, hypertransitory logo is uh, fairly simple. So I really just found a font that I liked and I typed it out maybe adjusted a little bit of the tracking in between the letters but really not much more than that um, now if I want to make sure that um, if I send this to a printer that it's not going to change if they have a different version of my font here which is Monterey FLF if they have a different version uh, something could change and then it, it could end up looking unexpected or, or you know something could change and it doesn't look the way that I want now a way around this is to use your layers palette and um, you can see here I've got this layer and um, the powerful thing about layers is I can I can hide a layer uh, you know if I got something else on there I can I can lock it so then I'm only selecting the bottom layer you know it's, this one's visible but locked now it's invisible you know, still locked or I can even double click on this and I can say hey don't print this layer even though you can see it you can select it you can do whatever when I print or when I make a PDF out of this uh, you can see it's italicized now that layer is not going to print but I do want that one so I'll turn it back on but uh, the key here is what can be done is if I want to safeguard this um, and make sure that um, if I outline this type I can still find what font that is so I'm gonna go and duplicate this and this bottom layer that I started with I'm gonna lock it and I'm gonna hide that so now that one is safe it's totally safe no matter what I do with this duplicated layer uh, I can always go back to that type so I'm gonna go here to type and I'm gonna say create outlines and you can see my key keyboard shortcut there but uh, so now I got outlines on that thing and now when I send it to the printer he doesn't need to have the font um, at all. He can just print and, and um, go do what he needs to do, and I don't have to worry that it's going to change any. So that's a, a very good way to use your layers. I, I use it all the time to save items that uh, not necessarily printing, but I might want to go back to them later, elements of a design that I might even put it out here outside the pasteboard and just save it on a non-printing layer just to be safe. I'll make the, hide the layer and, and make it non-printing. Um, you know, if I double click on this, then I can uncheck the print and make sure it, it won't get in the design somehow. So uh, that's one way you're going to want to use those layers. Um, they really save you a lot of hassle. Um, so that's that. And another thing I want to talk about is uh, if I go back to my type layer here. Now, uh, a lot of times you'll see type that has some kind of an effect applied to it and uh, some of the most popular ones are in the warp category so the effect menu down in the warp and once you get in here you're gonna see that uh, you can affect all of them from in here so it really doesn't matter which one you choose you can you can get to all of them so clicking the preview button is gonna show me what that's gonna do now uh, that's way too much obviously I can take it down and uh, I'm on a horizontal now if I do vertical wow don't like that but so you can see what can be done here with with the warp options and uh, going through will show you a preview of what's going to happen to each one of those you know if I did the flag and distort it a little bit more so that's what I'm going to get I'm going to click OK on this one so this is an effect so it's kind of applied live to it it's not really real yet now if I were to go to my view and click my outline mode, which is command Y, you see the text is really still the way that it was. It's really still, you know, straight and narrow and whatever. But this is a preview of what that's going to look like. Now let's say I need to turn that into outlines and really make it real. I would have to go to uh, my object menu and say expand appearance. So um now this is this is all outlined. If I go to Command Y, that's what happens. It's not type anymore. I'm going to undo that. So now I'm, I'm back at being type. You can see. And when it says expand appearance, 
that's meaning that it's using the appearance palette you can always tell what effect you've got applied by using the appearance palette okay well I've got warp flag applied to this right now you know if I double click on this I can get back to that effect uh, real easily and change it and adjust it now if I were to go back to warp and go to flag I'm gonna get a warning it's gonna tell me hey you're about to apply another instance of this you're not going to affect the same one this is another one so uh, you probably want to avoid that um, I can't think of any time when I've actually applied two instances of the effect but you could have your reasons but that's that's what's going to happen if you do it again so uh, I've got this and I'm going to undo this one I'm going to get rid of this uh, by clicking the trash icon and now this thing is default uh, appearance and so uh, other effects you might want to try um, you can go to styles the drop shadow is a is a popular one so you can see I've got a drop shadow there now again to affect that same drop shadow I need to go in here I mean I don't really like the way that one looks so in Illustrator your your offsets are really kinda way off at first um, I'll probably change that to 0 0.03 and I normally I'll start with 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 and kind of get it up there where I want it to go. You kind of see it looks kind of bad right now. And that means that I need to go under my effect menu and check my document raster effect settings. So they're at the screen setting right now. That's um, that's really low. It's not going to work for printing, obviously. Normally, I kick that up to high. That's going to increase your uh, file size, but it will yield the best results when you do it and this preserves spot colors if you chose a spot color for your shadow it will keep that spot color in there which normally I, I would also avoid too because it makes it a lot more complex when there's transparency and spot colors involved uh, it's a lot of opportunity to screw something up there so let's click OK on that though and we'll see that that drop shadow looks a lot better now because it's using you know 300 dots per inch to you know render that shadow and the thing is if I scale this up I mean I'm still in vector mode here so that shadow is going to keep getting recalculated and re uh, re applied at a correct size so I'm not losing um, quality um, by by using a raster shadow it's not quite raster yet um, so anyway that's another effect that uh, is often applied and there's there's more than that in there too I mean you got drop shadows you got glows and stuff they're not as good as as Photoshop and there's also again some of the little niceties are not there like I can't I can't take another you know box and then right click this one and then apply the shadow to it uh, no so that you can't do that but I mean you can do some things that are worthwhile here I think uh, next I'm going to talk about doing the um, the 3D effects on your type. So uh, stay tuned for that one.